Hip-Hop Station. It's your girl, Kay Simone. And joining me in the building right now is Chris Lofton. Now, listen, I'm excited to have this man in the building because I I'm excited. Don't talk to me like that. I'm That's first of all, don't talk to me like that. And you forgot the D. I ain't going to stop you, but continue. Chris D. Lofton. But hold on. Excuse we me. Chris D. Lofton. Okay, right. Because I don't know okay. who Chris Lofton is. Never met him. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Continue. You got it. So y'all see what kind of interview we about to have today, okay? Y'all see it. Y'all hear it, okay? So look, if y'all don't know him, he plays... What What is your character's name? I cannot pronounce it. We Kashan. just had this talk. Right, Kizin. Kashan, Kashan, Kiz Kassan. You can say Kisan. Some people say Kisan. Some people say Kassan. I'll say Kassan. Kassan Hell, I might be wrong. Yeah, Kassan T. Kassan T. Yeah. When you look at the name, like when you hear it, it's one thing. But then when you look at it, it's like, what? Right. Look like it could be Kissin. K-I-S-A-N. You know Kassan. Well, I'll Kiss just say Kassan. Yes. But you yeah. like Kassan T. Yeah. On Ballers. Yeah. HBO Ballers, man. So your character is a high head. This is third. This is your third season mm -hmm. playing Kassan. Yeah. And your character is a high head. To say the least, a high head, I mean, that's like, that's at the surface. I like to look at him as a complex character. I don't want to just say high head, that's too easy. Okay, you describe him as a wild card. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a wild card, you know? He got so what makes, him, what makes him the wild card? Because he's just complex, man. It's different dynamics. It's not just like, he's just not, in real life and with my character, I feel like I don't really like people who are too far on one side of the spectrum. You can't be too lame. You can't be too hood. <laughs> you can't be too nice. You can't be too mean. So he gives you the Yeah, you can't be too far on one side of the spectrum, whether that spectrum be good or bad. And I feel like Kassan is kind of like double dutching on every side of the spectrum. Like, he got his foot in on every side. Like, he, he hood, but he smart. But he talented, but he dumb. But he this, <laughs> but he that. It's like... He just double dutching over there, like he don't know what's going on half so, the time. So let's look back to your first season, because this is the third season and the final season, which I don't understand why it's the final season, but we'll get to that yeah, in a minute. I don't we'll, even want to talk about. We'll get to that okay, in a minute. Right, okay. Understood. But let's look at the first season for Kassan, uh -huh. Okay, for your character. Right. Your character came in the wild card. Uh -huh. You know, and he has some of a survivor's remorse. Right. That's exactly how I described it. Look at you. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> And he felt bad for, you know, I guess leaving certain people behind yeah. and making it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, what can we see this season from Kassan? Man, Kassan, I, I would like to say that this is like the emancipation of Kassan T. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like he kind of grows up in certain aspects, but at the same time, he, he, he kind of still needs you to grow up at the same time. But it's like... He still got that survivor's remorse. I'm still with my homies. My 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 homies, if you watch the show, they're actually still, they come back this season. They actually oh. around my friends who were there in season three. They weren't there in season four, but they're back for this season. So I didn't completely get rid of them. So that survivor's remorse is, is still kind of existing, you know. And I think I think Kassan is just in for a wild ride. If you watch the show, like Kassan's character might, might make you laugh, might make you cry this season. It's going to get real. Like I go crazy this season. Like, I really go crazy. You really go crazy. I really go, for, especially for ballers. Like, I mean, I kind of got ballers looking like an episode of Power for at least two or three episodes in there. Okay. And then, like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know. I kind of got ballers turned up a little bit for these next couple episodes. So, no, without giving us a spoiler alert, right? you know what I'm saying? Without no spoilers, yeah. what makes what makes Kassan turn up a little bit? Um, We'll if, just see. We'll just see more... Urban like encounters with Kassan. There, 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 can we say that? Yeah, like there'll be a little bit more. Why are you being so politically correct? A little bit more black activity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know we live. I can't say what I want to say. I'm trying to, to help you. I want to get you in trouble. Uh, yeah. There we go. A little, a little bit more black activity. He gonna be turned up this this year on some like kind of black activity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm excited for this. Yeah. I, I'm excited. I'm excited too. This Sunday gonna be a little taste. Yeah, because we Sunday. didn't see you last Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday. I wasn't in the uh, premiere. They usually be playing with me, HBO, uh, what, what's going on. But I'm in the second episode. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. Okay. Yeah. But, so let me ask you this, because I know you did say that you and your character was similar and along the lines of that survival remorse. Do you still feel like that? You know, being three years in uh, with the season. And this is you as Chris D. Lofton. Look at you. Look at you. Don't forget the D. Don't forget the D now. Uh, 
I would say yes and no. I mean, it's a little bit easier now because I don't actually live in Chicago no more. Okay. So, like, if I was still in Chicago in my element, in my hood, around my people that I went to high school with, that I grew up with, my friends, you know what I'm saying? The survivor's remorse would probably hit a little different. But in L.A., like, I don't know these names. You know what I'm saying? Like, I so, mean, like, I don't really have no remorse. Forget all of you. I don't even know any of you. What's your name again? Like, who are you? When did I meet you? Who? Like, you know? Like, so, no, I don't really have that survivor's remorse in L.A. because I live there now. So, it's like, I don't, how do you even have my number, you know? But right. if I was in Chicago, it would probably hit me a little bit more, like, the survivor's remorse. Because I'd be like, I know, I know, dang, I wish I could take my homie to this event. I want to take him to this party. I wish he could come to set and do this. Like, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So, like, wait, what is it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm from the west side of Chicago. Okay. I'm going to say that. Okay. I'm going to say that. And my friends are very much so probably still in that element. Got it. You know, so. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so, you got it. You got to be careful with who yeah, you bring yeah. around the crew. And I know, you know how to turn it off and on, but some of them some don't of them or don't. don't care to. Like, not that they don't. It's just that they just don't care to sometimes. Yeah, they yeah. hit you with the, I'm from Chicago. Yeah, and, 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 and sometimes I just ain't got time for that, man. I ain't got time for that sometimes. That's understandable. Yeah, sometimes you got to chill. So, but let's talk about the journey getting up to being Kassan. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the journey because... You, a lot of people probably don't remember you from Hardball right, and Meet the Browns, yeah, you know, and things right. of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So let, let's start with Hardball because that's really one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I know. We just talking. talked about that. That's I dope. know. That's dope. You lit for that, by the way. I know. You lit. You so lit. So for those who do not remember who he is or like, well, which one was he? I don't remember him. So he was the pitcher that hit Michael B. Jordan and they got <laughs> the fighting. <laughs> and they got the fight. She and they really got the fight. She really and then, watching it. And then when their coach, um, when the coach was like, well, what happened? G-Baby said, let me break it down for you real quick. Yeah. yeah. So he came over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. So Facts. it was between this guy and Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Like being a child star, growing up mm. in this industry to now being an adult. Yeah. How has that transition been for you? Oh, uh, man. That, that transition been... It's been hectic because, you know, when you when you do it as a kid, people look at you one way. Like, mm -hmm. it's supposed to go one way. Things supposed to be one way. But it's like life happens. Like, at the end of the day, even when I did Hardball, I wasn't trying to be no actor. I showed up at that audition thinking it was a baseball trial. <laughs> like, I played sports for real. I'm just right. from, I'm just a kid from, from the hood of Chicago that liked playing sports. I was like, yo, t mama, take me where the radio said. I play sports. So... I went there with intentions on being on a baseball team, and it ended up being a movie audition, and then they picked me, and now I just so happen to be an actor now, and I was like, wow. but nah, I was still very much so, like, wanting to do other stuff in my life, like, I was still going through those life changes that people go through, but then when you're a child actor, it's kind of like, you take too much time off, and it's like, what happened? Right. You know? You take two, so that was kind of what I didn't want to do at the same time. Even young, I was only like 10, 11 years old, but even then... I didn't know really what was going on, but I knew enough to know, like, my life ain't been this lit until y'all <laughs> came around. And, okay, so you know what? I kind of need to do this again. My mama <laughs> seems happier. Uh, dad seems happier. Uh, everybody seems to be smiling. Uh, so let's keep this going. You know, that's kind of that's kind of what it was. I didn't really know what was going on. I was too young to really grasp. Like, what, was, what, what it was? Yeah, you like, just what it was. Fun. I was just having fun. I'm like, right. I'm, I'm, I'm don't live at home with mom and them. I'm downtown Chicago living at a hotel. Somebody comes and pick me up every morning and we on a set <laughs> and I eat whatever I want and I get to go to Toys R Us and I just cast out on Dreamcast about every single game that Sega ever made. What? Like, what so this drink? is great. Right. What a drink. This that's, is, this is great. And I'm like 10, you. 11 years old. I'm like, I just cashed out at Toys R Us about Dreamcast and every game that they made. Like, I was like, okay, whatever it is that we're doing, let's continue this. <laughs> whatever so it is that's, so that's how you started that's how I started so you can't even be mad at that yeah I you can't like, even be mad at that but see the thing is somebody asked you that that you took a break like somebody asked you why did you take a break mm -hmm. and you didn't take a break no. you went to commercials yeah, and you I was were just kind of stuff. finding you know finding yourself yeah in that in that process yeah, you know because you're being a cute little kid to now being a grown man nobody's looking at the cute little kid anymore. yeah it's different you know like so you can different. get away with being a bad actor when you're a cute kid absolutely but when you're a grown-ass man and you can't act it's like okay you're not <laughs> as cute anymore i'm gonna need you to have some talent you know you know what i'm saying so right. it's kind of like that so that whole cute kid thing was one thing and then also it was just like i said life happened and i'm one of them dudes where i'm still very much so like kind of just true and grounded and rooted like so 
I kind of look at Chris D. Lofton, the actor, and Chris Lofton, the person, as like two different people. Got it. Like, not on no craziness, but just like on some compartmentalizing and separation type situation where it don't where you don't get too jaded by this industry. By this industry. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like sometimes Chris Lofton the person needs me more than Chris D. Lofton the actor. And it's like, I'm sorry, agent. No, I'm not going to that audition. You know? Real life is happening right now. And I got I got real life to deal with. So and if y'all can't deal with that then like spin. You know what I respect that. And I respect that a lot because that's, how it is, man. That, that's a way to keep yourself grounded. And that's what I in do. In this crazy yeah. industry. Even in LA, like sometimes yeah. I tell like my publicist sitting right here, like and my agents, my managers, like I tell them sometimes, like, bro, I'm I'm not going to that audition, bro. Like, I'm sorry, like, bro, like I got this stuff going on. I'm trying to figure out how this about to happen, this about to happen, this about to happen. The last thing I care about right now is remembering eight pages of a script. No, the answer is no, because Chris Lofton, the person, needs me more than Chris D. Lofton, the actor. I don't even care about him right and now. And I respect He'll that. He'll be fine, but Chris Lofton, the person, needs me right now, and I got to be there for him the same way I got to be there for the actor. I got to be there for him, too. You know, you can't neglect one trying to chase the other one, and that's kind of how I manage to keep a balance. Like, I just, I never take myself or my job too serious. I don't. I don't look at myself the way I think other people might look at me because I, I ain't, you know. I can tell, and it's so, it's humbling though. It's yeah, humbling to even just sit here and talk to you and you say that. Because I, I can tell, it's, I feel like I'm kicking it with my homeboy. Yeah, I don't that's be how on I that, feel bro. like. like you know, I, really, I, feel I really like. don't be on that. Like it's like it's so hard <laughs> for me to even like. Sometimes people come up to me and they be like, "Aren't you the guy from Ballers?" And I be like, "Yeah." <laughs> Like I have to, rem I have to remind myself. Like you, 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 you're damn right. Yes, I am. I am. That's me. I am the dude from Ballers. Yep, yeah, you're right. Let's take a picture. Like I'd be forgetting, like, cause I'm still kind of got that hood Chicago in me. So I people, I see people staring at me. I'm kind of like, what are you on? Like, what you on, bro? Absolutely. Like I'm like, what? Hey, y'all see? You keep looking at me. Who is that? Y'all know him? <laughs> like I'm still on that a little bit, and then I'd be forgetting, like, oh no. They you, probably know me from. You home. are on the TV show with The Rock. Like, it just, I'd be forgetting. I'd be, I swear I'd be forgetting. I'd be like, if he looks at me one more time, I, just, I might need to go see about him. Because if he looks one more time, like, but then I remember, <laughs> wait a minute, you're kind of on a TV show on HBO. Don't forget that, Chris. Like, but I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm getting used to it. I'm kind of living in it a little bit, you know. I re yeah. Listen, I respect this. This, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> this is hilarious. You're funny. I rock no. with you. So look, I read somewhere mm -hmm. that in the process of your, you know, just trying to figure yourself out going from the kid to the man, yeah. okay, that you um, was looking, or you had a scholarship for baseball. Yeah, to play at, baseball um, and football. At Grambleton. Yeah, Grambling. Yeah. Grambling. Yeah, Grambling. 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 State University. Yeah, I turned it down to keep acting. Why? Why? Yes. Man, because even at a young age, I was like one of them little fake smart ass kids, you know? Fake smart? Yeah, one of them fake smart kids that just thought he knew too much. And I like, I started just overthinking and overanalyzing at a real young age. And even okay. at 17, I was sitting there like, okay, sports, I love it. But I've been doing this my whole life. I've been playing sports my like since I could walk. I was playing football, baseball, basketball since I could walk. Like, I was kind of bred to do that. Like, you're going to the league. Like, that's kind of <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That's right. kind of like how, how I was bred, so... I was like, okay, if I go to college and get this another four to five years, if I get redshirted or whatever, whatever, if I get this another four to five years, and now in college it turns into a job. It's like you got two a days, you're doing this, it's this, it's this, it's this. It's a real life job. I'm like, okay. So did you ultimately feel like it was going to take away from the acting? No, I just felt like the the uh, the risk and the return wasn't it wasn't worth it to me. It just I just I was so you too looked paranoid. at it with a business mind. Yeah, that's even at seventeen, I looked at it. Got and I was it. like, okay, yeah, I've been doing this so long, going on going on seventeen, eighteen years. I've been playing sports, and now I go to college another four years. What if I go out here and I twist, break my ankle, tear my Achilles, rip my ACL, do whatever, and now I'm not as good as I used to be, or they take away my scholarship because I'm hurt. Or I don't even, I go do all of this and don't even make it to the league. And now I'm the dude who 33 talking about how good he used to be, showing people my highlights on my football tape. And I'm 33 talking, talking, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, like, I didn't want to be that like guy. That's how your mind was reading. That's how my mind was at 17. I was wow. like, bro, what if I don't make it to the NFL? And now I just wasted 26 years of my life. And all I know how to do is play damn football. I get it. And I was like, and then in so sports. That's wise, the choice. Yeah, the wise I'm like, decision. in sports, if I don't make it to the MLB or to the NFL, those dudes still got to go to work. Them dudes playing arena football and all that, they got jobs. 
I was like, I don't want to go to work. I want to do something else. I don't want to do that. I don't want to punch clocks and go do that. I, that's not what I want to do. Right. So I was like, okay, at least we're acting. I ain't got to be Will Smith to not go to work. I don't care if nobody recognized me. You ain't got to say hello to me ever. Ask for a picture. I don't care if I got 100,000 followers or 10,000. Blue check or no blue check. With acting, I could be nobody that you ever know and never have to go to work. Ever. You don't even have to know me. It was like, I was like, oh, this is perfect. And I'm like, and then if I get out of shape, there's a role for the fat dude. If I go bald, it's a role for the bald dude. If I get hit by a car, get paralyzed tomorrow, it's a role for somebody in a wheelchair. I can do this until the day I literally die. Not sports. Got it. Sports is like so you window. found so you found a passion in acting. Yeah, that's, that's I what grew it's to love ultimately. It. I grew to love it. Mm -hmm. I grew to love it. Like at first I didn't. I was a kid. I ain't. I ain't. I ain't, I ain't know. I grew to love it once I realized like the actual potential that it had, and then and started treating it as such instead of just kind of treating it like whatever. Because I used to very much so live another life. So when I used to kind of be that way right and not really treat it like yo like you know this is this is, this could be your way out of this what are you doing why are you not going to that audition why are you not giving this your all why are you hanging out here why are you with these people you know right and then that's when it started clicking as i got older i was like i'm 22 23 now and i'm like why am i in the car with these <laughs> i just i just left set with tyler perry why am i here like what am i you know you can have this you back to, i don't even i don't even want that i don't even why do I have this? Why do I? Who gave this to me? Who, are you responsible? Like I don't. Oh, want this. that is funny. Yeah, I don't want this. That is hilarious. <laughs> so let's go. Let's okay. So you were seventeen yeah. when you had this decision, and mm -hmm. you made you contemplated, and you made the decision that was best for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, eighteen. You're now on Meet the Browns, mm -hmm. and you see Lance Gross. Yeah, twenty eight year old. Yeah, twenty eight year old Lance got a nice, got a got a decent role. Yeah, you know, in it. And that was it, his first movie. It, right, and it was his first movie. But yeah. you approached Lance like, mm -hmm. oh, what do I gotta do? Like, what yeah. what do I gotta do? And the advice that he gave you was, he's twenty eight, you're eighteen. This is his first movie. Yo, this you is really your fourth. My... Yo, you really. You're so dope. For I'm that. dope, right? Like, and you quoted <laughs> it verbatim. That's exactly what happened. That's lit. I like you. That's dope. See? She's, uh, you know what, Atlanta, y'all got a good person on the air every day. She's amazing. She's dope. She does her research. She does Thank her due you. diligence. That's dope. But continue. Go ahead. So, you know, he, he gives you this, this, um, this advice. Mm -hmm. You know, you 18, you got, you got years. Yeah. How does it make you feel resonating now to being 31? Right. How does this resonate for you? Thinking back to 18 when he told you that. Because, you know, when yeah, you're young, I, yeah, you're you, you are not trying to hear that, like, I don't got time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm my age, and I'm like, I don't got time. Yeah. I don't got time. Yeah. I don't got time to play with y'all. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? No, if it don't happen now, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's you know, the mindset that a lot of 18 to my age yeah. feels like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So Definitely. how does it resonate with you now at 31? Man, now it's like, I I hear what you were saying. It's like, I, I hear what you were saying. Like, it's, it's, it's definitely a... A marathon and not a sprint you know it's a, it. It definitely the marathon continues for sure and i can see what he's saying more so now than ever because it's like look dude like come on man. I'm, I'm 28 i'm getting my first i'm getting my first break you already this your fourth fifth time doing a movie like calm down you're gonna be all right if you're only 18 <laughs> and this your fifth time doing this you by 28 you you'll be all right you'll be all right you know and that's kind of but you like you said i think it goes with with the way we are as people, as black people, I feel like we we really got to shake the whole want and need of instant gratification. And that kind of loops back into that. Like, you know, we all want instant gratification. It's like, no, I need it now, I need it now. But it's like, if you could sacrifice two, three years of your life to live the way you want to for the rest of your life, would you? And that's kind of that's kind of how I look at it. I look at That's how I look at the game. It's like, yeah, okay. That's what I told my people, my family, before I moved to L.A. It's like, look, all right, I'm, I'm about to move out here. I'm going to go by myself. I'm going to go to California. And I'm doing this for us. This ain't just for me. This is for us. Because I, I am my family's last hope at a better life. They are from the backwoods of Mississippi. It is me or nothing. Like So I'm like, that's why I got so much. People want to know why I do it, how I do it. And that's why. You know, I'm my family's last hope. So you know what I'm saying? So I told them, I was like, yo, before I go, it might be a couple. It's going to be some Christmases, some Mother's Day, some birthdays, some Thanksgivings. Y'all are not going to see me. Y'all just not, because that's hustling backwards to me. 
I'm not finna spend three, four hundred dollars on a flight just to come down and smile in y'all face and we all broke and then I go back to LA and I ain't got nothing to eat and y'all can't even send me ten dollars. What good is that? We hustling backwards. Exactly. And I'm the one that's gonna get us out of all of this. That's really hustling backwards. Right. No way. I so, yeah, we might have to miss a few years, Mom. I love you. I love you so much. I love you, sister. Love my nieces. Love all y'all. But it might be a couple years. I don't see y'all on Christmas. But they but, respect that, though, but right? I promise you, when I come down there on your birthday, when I finally get down there, watch and see. It's going to be the best birthday you ever had. I got you. I got y'all. And that's kind of like the conversation I had with my people before I dipped. And, like, it's coming to fruition. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I could correlate with that yeah. a lot, you know. I was actually supposed to go home last week, and I was like, uh, the event I was actually going home to host got mm. canceled. I say, so now I'm just going there to spend money at this point. At the, right, so, and it like, don't add up. It don't add up. And I live in LA. Like, I, I, oh, my God. Like, no way. I'm not like, what? Y'all want me to? Oh, no. My rent too high as it is, so no way. To be just buying flights just to come smile because I miss my mommy. I love you, mom, but I mean... I'm, but I can talk to you. you I'll know? let you on the phone Facebook, until we good. Facebook, Instagram, we got video chats, you know, call me Everything, whenever. Everything, you know and I love saying? you to death. I'm coming. I come visit my mom. I do all that now that I got things in order a little bit, but like that first little two years in L.A. when I had to get it together, two, three years, man, it was like, all right, I'm, I'm just bear with me. I love y'all, but bear with me. And now it's like, it's starting to come to fruition. I'm about to actually... I'm going to stay in Atlanta on Monday, and I'm going to watch this episode of Ballers with my family. Like, like now it's like, all right, cool. Now I'm coming back, and we can do stuff. Like, look, we can watch me on TV now. I can actually take y'all to get something to eat. We can go to dinner, and I'm not even tripping. Like, I don't need nothing from you. We are good. Like, and that's what it's about. You know, we good. You that's know? exactly what it's about. Yeah, so, like, that's definitely what it's about, man. That's what I do it for. I don't, you know, you got to have a why, and I, you know. And that's your why. That's my why. I mean, it ain't for me, because I'm good. Like, I'll be straight with... I wear t-shirts and jogging pants all day, you know? I don't need no, nothing. I'm good. Like, so I don't do it for me. It's for everybody else. Right. Yeah. So, let's loop back to your character, Kassan, mm -hmm. real quick. And let's make it more based on what's going on right now. Okay. Okay? So, you know Jay-Z teamed up with the NFL. Right. Caused a big ruckus. Right. In, especially in the black community. Right. Period. Right. How do you think your character would have responded to Jay-Z in the partnering with NFL? Not you, right. but your character. I think my character would have rocked with him because he's a young dude and he probably would have been a fan of Jay-Z. <laughs> my character definitely would have been the young, flashy dude who probably, when, when every other athlete in the NFL would have stood against it, he would have been the one that would have probably stood up and just been like, man, forget what y'all talking about, Jay-Z the GOAT, da 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 I'm rocking with you, Jay, let me know if you uh, if you buy the team, I'll lead these right now. Like, I feel like my character, the one that would have had, like, a crazy sound bite of just, like, riding with Jay-Z and, like, just completely throwing off the NFL, just, like, tossing them to the side. I think my character would have rocked with Jay-Z real tough. So now, what about you? Would you would you side with your character? If that's how you think your character would feel, would you side with your character on that? Uh, I don't think I would go on record and say too much. I'm not really the on the record saying too much about like current affairs and politics type of dude. And, I get it. And, and I don't really, I just kind of stay away. You know, I just kind of leave it alone. At least until I got my voices a little bit bigger. <laughs> you know, until I got a little bit more reach, then I might start to talk on some topics. Well, but I'll give you my I'll give you my opinion about it, mm -hmm. and maybe you could bounce off my opinion. All right. Okay. So my opinion is. I just think instead of jumping to conclusions, let's see what he gets in and do first. What he does. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just, because we, all we are doing is boycotting. Boycotting, we made, we raised awareness when, you know, Ka Kaepernick got on that one knee. Mm -hmm. We raised the awareness. A lot of people boycotted last, last Super Bowl. You know, the numbers weren't, weren't as yeah. great as previous yeah. Super Bowls. You know what I'm saying? So the awareness is there. So what do we do moving forward now? Right. How do we how do we make a change? And that's that's what I would say. It's just let's see what he does first before we start you. making opinions you. and assumptions yeah, yeah, yeah. and choosing sides. Like, cause I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna stop listening to Jay Z. What? I'm not gonna stop watching the NFL. I'm not watching, <laughs> stop watching football for anybody. You can take one knee, two knees. See, this is why I don't talk about it. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm too. I'm. But, I didn't here's, say and here's the thing: we we are in a society where everybody is sensitive. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so, I'm but not, I respect that. I'm not. Like, I respect I, that. Like, if man, if people just knew how I grew up, the way my father talked to me, like I'm conditioned to not be sensitive to words. Right. Since a kid, my daddy has talked to me, called me every name but my name, 
talk to me just like I was a stranger on the street, but I knew he loved me. Like, and so right. to me, like, it, I don't have that sensitivity meter. So, like, my mouth, that's why it sometimes get hard for me in relationships because, like, I see the way, like, the way my dad be talking to my mama. <laughs> Sometimes I I kind of like will relate that in my relationship, and she be like, "Boy, who you think you're talking to?" And I be like, "You know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, you're absolutely right. I apologize. I was just I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what came over me. You're right. But so that's definitely how it is, man. I, I definitely I, just, feel. I feel like people are very sensitive, and when you talk about something, and if you have opposing opposing opinion or mm -hmm. opposing views, it causes problems. It causes conflict because you can't respect my opinion because it's different. It's different from yours. Right. You know. So that's how I feel, but that's that's my take on the whole Jay Z NFL thing. Just give it a chance. Let's see yeah, what give happens. It a chance. First. And people not even reading. He just supposed to be the like. He just supposed to produce the halftime half shows. Show. Like like what? Like okay. Like he's producing the halftime shows for the Super Bowl. Like you know, man, like he working the front office. The man is producing the halftime shows for the Super Bowl now. Y'all keep complaining about all these white people out there and these rock bands at the halftime show. Well, now Jay-Z produces it. Maybe Benny Siegel will come out there and y'all will shut up or something. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he'll play Fill It In The Air or something and y'all can shut up. You know? Right. I respect it, though. Yeah. I love it. So what can we... I know I asked you this um, earlier, but with your character mm -hmm. this season, right? I'm excited I know your fans are excited. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. So, like, what, what, what can we expect this season overall? Overall, with my character, just on ballers. On ballers. Okay, yeah, just just on ball. Uh, overall, this season, because it is the last and final season, you can expect bigger. They're gonna go bigger. They really pushing some envelopes. We are doing a lot of stuff that you ain't never seen on ballers before. If you if you are a fan of ballers and you actually been watching since the beginning, you are gonna see that this season. Nothing like this has happened. Like, they've never even played like this, touched on these subjects, shown this type of content. And I think it's just going to be, it's going to be refreshing for people who watch ballers. It's, it's, it's kind of going to be shocking, too. A lot of the things that happen is, like, going to throw a couple people off guard. But it's going to be, I think it's going to be dope. It's literally going to be the best season. Best and last, you know? So. Okay. Yeah. So I'm excited. You I'm can excited catch Ballers too. on HBO yes, every Sunday, 1030. 1030. See, 1030. 10:30. So look, I want to play this game real quick. Uh-oh, what's up? Okay. And it's called K's Classics, This or That. K's Classics. K's this Classics, or This or That. All right, let's do it. All right, let's do it. So, football or baseball? Football. Okay. I know that you dibble and dabble in producing. Mm -hmm. So, would you prefer acting or producing? Mm-hmm. Like for life or just as of today? In general. Acting. Acting. If I had to pick one, yeah, acting. Okay, hardball or meet the Browns? Hardball. Okay. Chick-fil-A or Popeye's? Just the sandwich? Just the sandwich. Um. <laughs> Oh, oh, old faithful. I'm gonna have to go Chick Fil A, man. Old faithful. Really? Yeah, I'm a, but that Popeye sandwich was a hit. I did have it. <laughs> I didn't it even have it yet, but I had needed it. that reaction. <laughs> it was a hit. Like I just, I just had to like re revisit that on my palates for a minute. I revisited it. You ain't seen it. I just that was me revisiting. <laughs> um, but I'm still gonna probably have to go with. Oh, no, I'm gonna go Chick Fil A. Still, still Chick Fil A. That. Yeah. And last but not least, power. Trey songs and Joe. That's easy. Joe, Trey, get out of here. Yeah. Just spin. Spin, Trey. Spin. Get out of here. We didn't need you for that. Love you, Trigger. You the homie, but spin. Get off the record. We didn't need you for that. 50, what are you doing? Why would you do that? That's how I felt, too. I was like, come on. They'd have been better Joe off putting Rotimi on it. That's my homie. Rotimi, he played You Trey know, and that's who I thought it was going to be. Yeah, late, like, well, if they're going to do something like that, at least put Rotimi, at least it would have made more sense. Because now it's just like, well, who? What is going on? What's happening? Why? He's not on the show. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe, Joe is still the best. I'm sorry. Joe is yeah, the best. Yeah, Joe did the best. We need Joe, we need Joe we back. We need Joe back. I, I think felt 50, the soul But you know what? Joe. I really think 50 did that on purpose. I think he did too. I think 50 did it on purpose because he know that his, like, online presence is so strong and the new people is going to talk so much mess and now he's going to change it and then make people really tune in. So, yes, make sure you check Ballers. Every Sunday, 10.30, HBO. Yes. Indeed. Thank you so much for coming by kicking it with me. Thank you. I appreciate you, Mom. All right, y'all. It's your girl, Kate Simone, on Hot 107.9. Oh.